Yo, what's going on? In today's video, I get the how to make after images slash kind of fat flash stuff. I think it's pretty much the same. I think after images and flash stuff are pretty much the same thing. So this video is literally going to be the exact same thing as the dashing, the dashing video. If you guys just watched that video, which was um uh I don't know what day, but like two days before this video release. If you guys just watch it, that the updated version of the dash system for TSB, it's literally the same code. Just I incorporated um you know like an, i made it after image system into it i guess integrated it and then i took away the animations because it's not really needed if you're going to be invisible but anyway you guys know after images and like you know bleach games and stuff you, you see it in some anime games not a lot but yeah so let's go ahead and get straight into the video okay so first things first right <clears throat> we're going to need to get a model for the after image so you could kind of make it you could really make it but I would just recommend um going to the toolbox right and then you guys can see i have it here right so after image so literally just go to the toolbox just type after image and it'll literally be the first thing it should be yeah white and then it'll like be green when you um actually bring it here when you bring it into the tool or sorry the workspace so you want to rename it to after image because this is you know the image you're going to leave behind and then you're going to want to change the color of everything obviously we don't want a green after image unless that's what you want but yeah we want it to be you know white so like a nice clear color and stuff um you want to double check to make sure it can't collide it's disabled to make sure that all the parts are anchored and then after that you want to open all the parts up and delete all the scripts because there's no reason to have all of them we just need the model so boom we're going to select all the scripts then once we do that we're going to delete them and then boom the model's ready to go we can then go ahead and drop the model inside of server storage we can then go ahead and go up here click part block right and then you can go ahead and anchor it disable can collide and make it transparent wherever i find okay there we go right and then you're going to go ahead and put that inside of server storage as well let me just double check okay i'm good Right, and then we have all of our stuff needed for server storage. Now we can go ahead and insert a remote event into replicated storage. So boom, you're gonna to want to rename this remote event to dash event. And then we're gonna to want to go ahead and you're gonna well, this is optional, but you can get a dash sound. I got this from the toolbox, just type dash and then just throw it inside the sound service. So then you can open up stutter player, insert a local script, right? Into stutter player scripts, then we name the script to dash script in parentheses put local, right? And you're gonna delete print hello world. And then I'm going to create a couple of variables. First, I'm going to get the user input service. I'm going to say local UIS is equal to game get service user input service. Then I'm going to create a variable for the dash mode event. So I'm going to say local dash event is equal to game the replicated storage wait for child dash event. Then I'm going to create a variable for, so so that we can keep track of whether or not a player is able to dash. So local can dash is equal to false then i'm going to create a variable for the dash direction so local dash direction is equal to special brackets i explained more of this code in like the dash video and stuff this, since this video is mo more so focused on the um after images portion but yeah then i'm going to go ahead and create our first function let's say uis that input began connect function in parentheses you're going to put input comma processed enter then going to save input dot user input type is equal to enum that user input type dot keyboard and not process which pretty much means the player is not typing a chat then enter you're then going to say if input dot key code is equal to enum dot key code dot w or the whole point is we're going for all of the the four movement keys w a s d so you can really just copy and paste this so control c control v control v control v then enter right and then of course like i said we're going for the movement keys so w a s and d there we go right then once we're in here we're then going to say can't we're going to set can dash equal to true because that means you know they're walking in a certain direction so they're able to dash and they're going to say dash direction is equal to input key code dot name which is pretty much whatever direction the player or it's whatever key the player is pressing but it's going to tell us like okay this is the direction they're trying to go in right you know w b forward s backwards a to the left d to the right then after that if statement we're then going to say if input dot key code is equal to enum dot key code dot q which is going to be our key bind uh, so that players can dash you can change this if you want and of course can't make sure that can dash equal to choose that the players are able to and make sure that dash direction is not equal to just or make sure it's not equal to nothing like in, there needs to be a direction so that we know like okay this is the direction the player is supposed to dash in then enter you're then going to say dash event you're going to fire the remote event, fire server, 
in quotation marks put dash that would be the name of the event and then comma you're of course you're going to send over the dash direction then we're going to set can dash equal to false for a little cooldown and then you're going to throw a task that way in there so task that way i recommend about one second then set it back can dash is equal to true and then we're done with that function we can then set up the second function we're going to say uis that input began or sorry not input again input ended right next function then in parentheses put input comma process enter let me scroll down you're going to say if input dot user input type is equal to nm dot user input type dot keyboard and not process same thing right then you're going to say can dash is equal to false and then you're going to say dash direction is equal to nothing so just a blank string and stuff this is so that uh what's it called this is wait i feel like i'm oh sorry, sorry i actually forgot i have a forgotten if statement you want to say if input that key code is equal to wait input yeah the key code is equal to enum dot key code dot q then enter and then you're going to throw this inside of it control c control v so pretty much this is when the player releases the dashing key the dash key so we know okay it's time for them to you know stop because they already dashed and then it's like now they're it's kind of resetting it so that they're able to dash in a, in a new direction or if they want to go in the same direction right now we can go ahead and move to the server side let's go ahead and insert a server script into the server script service like i said i've removed the animations because there's not really a point since you're literally going to be invisible so it doesn't really make any sense to have dashing animations so i'm going to rename the script to dash script in parentheses put server you're going to delete print hello world you're going to create a couple variables we got to get a couple services first let's get the sound service you're going to say local s is equal to game get service sound service then i'm going to oh i didn't even mean to do that but and then we're going to get the debris service so debris is equal to game get service debris right then you're going to get the twin service so local ts is equal to game get service twin service sorry i don't know why i spelled it with debris instead of ds but anyway um, and then lastly, you're going to get the dash mode event, which we can go to the local script and then just copy and paste it. So control C, control V, and boom. Then we can go ahead and set the first function. We're going to say dash event dot, or well, only function on the scripts. Well, aside from the ones inside of it though. But anyway, we're going to say on server event, next function in parentheses, you're going to put PLR, which is short for the player, comma, event type, with the name of the offense, then arg1, which is short for argument number one, then enter. And then of course, our first variable is going to be the character. So we'll character is equal to player dot character then you're going to set the if statement so if event type is equal to quotation marks dash enter you're then going to first we're going to create a variable um called dash direction so we know which direction they're going in so dash direction is a, will of course be equal to argument number one since that's what we sent over from the local script you're then going to start creating the attachment and linear, linear velocity for the um the push it's going to give to be able to make the, uh, allow the player to dash you're going to say local attachment is equal to instance that new invitation marks attachment parent this to the characters humanoid root art then you're going to create the linear velocity so local linear velocity is equal to instance that new invitation marks put linear velocity you want to parent this to the attachment right and then afterwards you're going to create a part you're going to say local part is equal to instance that new invitation marks you're going to put part right and then you're going to parent this wait oh sorry sorry not instance that new sorry, sorry i forgot we already had the part sorry we're gonna say game dot server story dot part and we're gonna clone it right and then we're gonna say part dot parent is equal to workspace and then we're going to um we're gonna set it c frame uh in a second and stuff once we finish some other stuff so i'm then going to go ahead and say I'm gonna actually create another variable, one last variable. So local flyer, and we're gonna leave leave its value blank and stuff. We're just gonna leave it at that as we're gonna set it in a second. We're gonna say if dash direction is equal to quotation marks, you're gonna put W, so that means the player's trying to go forward, right? Then you're gonna say multiplayer or sorry, multiplier, right? Is equal to C frame dot new, and then it to, and in parentheses, you're gonna say negative one, comma negative one, comma negative twenty. This is how we go forward then you're going to type the word else and then you're just going to copy and paste this so control c control v and then just paste all of that again control c control v control v and then of course same thing so for a we're trying to go to the left so you're going to change this so that this is negative 20 and then you go over here and change this to just regular negative one this will be s so that means we're trying to go back 
So it's just the opposite of what we did the first time. So just change that to positive 20. Then for this, this is D. So we're, we're trying to go to the right. So boom. And then you're just going to do the opposite of what we did for the second one. So positive 20. And then this will, of course, be negative 1. Right. Then I'm going to go ahead and play the sound, right? So I'm going to go ahead after and I'm going to say ss.dash play, right? Then I'm going to create an accessory folder. And then I'm going to say local accessory folder is equal to instance.new folder. We're going to uh, parent this to the server storage. So again, we're going to keep this stored on the server, uh, server side and stuff. We're pretty much going to store all the players' accessories. And then we're going to give it back to them when they're done. So I'm going to say accessory folder dot name is equal to player dot name dot 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 quotation marks. You're going to say accessory folder. And then of course we need the player's name so that we can keep track of each one. So then uh, what's it called? We're going to keep track of each one, you know, via using the player's name and stuff so that we know which folder, like which accessories in the folder belong to uh, which care, which player. Right. So then I'm going to use the for loop. I'm going to say. Let me just go down first. Let me say for I comma V in pairs. Then you're gonna say character get children. Enter right, and then I'm gonna say if V is a part, right? And then oh wait, am I forgetting this? Oh no no, no this afterwards. Okay, so if V is a part or V is a mesh part, this this pretty much accounts for R six and R fifteen, right? And then you're gonna say in you're gonna press enter, then you're gonna say v dot transparency is equal to one because you don't want them to be invisible. Then you're gonna set up another another if statement inside of this if statement. You're gonna say if v if v dot name is equal to head. So if it's the head part of the body, you're gonna then going to say v dot face dot transparency is equal to one. The reason for this is because uh it, it would pretty much be that the player's body would be invisible, but like their eyes, you would be able to see their eyes and like, you know, their mouth and stuff. So, and that would kind of, you know, ruin the whole go invisible thing. Right. So then I'm going to set up another, uh, I'm set the else if statement. So I'm going to press that arrow, then enter, then I'm say right here, else if V is an accessory. So this is for the accessory portion. So, so if they're an accessory, we're then going to say, we're just going to reparent them. So V dot parent is equal to accessory folder. Right. And then, like I said, we're, we're storing that on the server side, right. Then once we're finished here, skip the two ends. You're then going to clone over the after image. So local after image is equal to game dot server storage dot after image clone. You're then going to say after image pivot to character dot humanoid root part. So pretty much their position or their C frame position right before uh they were uh what's it called right before they dashed. So then I'm gonna say after image dot parent is equal to workspace right. Then I'm going to say Part dot c frame is equal to character dot humanoid part that c frame times multiplier right then i'm going to finish setting up the linear velocity so linear velocity dot max force is equal to five nines one two three four five then linear velocity dot vector velocity is equal to in parentheses you're going to put part dot position minus character dot humanoid spell that wrong humanoid root part that position to go on the outside and then you're going to say dot unit times vector three dot new 100 comma zero comma 100 right and then oh sorry lastly you're going to say linear velocity dot attachment zero is equal to attachment then we're going to use the debris service so ds add item you're going to say attachment comma 0 0.1 seconds because we only want them to move you know for a brief second not like you know continuous continuous movement then we're going to wait that's the wait 0 0.3 seconds once we're done waiting, we're then going to make it so that their bodies reappear. So you're pretty much literally just going to copy and paste this for the Paris loop. So control C, control V, then you're just going to make some small changes to it. So the difference is this time you're going to want to do this. You're going to want to say if, and then you're going to want to put a parenthesis around here because I was running into an issue where it wasn't uh, checking the other one. Something about like and being like above or something. I don't know. So we're then going to say and v dot name is nil equal to humanoid root part because the humanoid root part is supposed to actually stay transparent and stuff right so humanoid root part and then we're of course going to say v dot transparency is equal to zero and then you're going to set this to zero as well and stuff right and then you can delete this part right here because we we of course need another uh what's it called for loop to be able to return there am i missing something 
Okay, I must have deleted one by mistake. Anyway, so we're then going to go ahead and skip the three ends. So, yeah, like right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and get to setting up the next four IV and pairs loop. I think I need to move this. Yeah. So I'm going to set up the next four IV and pairs loop. So I'm going to simply just say four I comma V and pairs. You're going to say accessory folder, get children, enter. And then you're just going to say parent is equal to character. And then everything should be back. Right. Then once that is done, you're then going to wait 0 0.2 seconds, pass that wait 0 0.2 seconds. And lastly, you're going to make the, um, what is it called? The after image uh, disappear. So you're going to say for I comma B in pairs, after image, get children, enter, right? And then you're going to set up the tween. So local after image tween is equal to PS create V comma tween info dot new. I went with zero. Oh, sorry. Uh, new I went with 0 0.05 I'm missing a parenthesis yeah 0 0.05 right and then comma enum dot oh I, I did the wrong wait what what's going on I mean info dot new that's the time oh yeah, yeah, yeah okay so right here boom yeah so then enum dot easing style dot linear comma enum dot easing direction you guys can do whatever you want by the way dot out and then lastly comma special brackets and then we're going to say transparency is equal to one and then lastly after image queen play right and then we can just simply we can just simply say um i don't really know how long it's gonna be. i think we'll take like we'll just say like, test that wait one second and then once that's done we're just gonna say after image destroy but yeah so let's go ahead and test to make sure everything works as always if you guys want access to any one of my scripts or models you guys can become either a channel member or is or a discord subscriber link to either one of those options can be found in the description why is there an error i didn't even notice this Oh, my bad. My bad. If you guys are getting that issue, make sure you delete the or. I did not mean to leave that or. Okay. So let's go ahead and test to make this work. So boom. Oh, there's I spelled position wrong. So I'll go fix this if you spelled it wrong as well. Oh, right here. I'm just copy and paste. Okay. Now let's see. It seems most of it's working though. So I think that's no okay. There's another one. Unable to assign property attachments. Uh, why did I oh well, my bad. Not a <laughs> I meant attachment, not arg one. And then okay let's see now there we go okay so as you guys can see you know we disappear our full body disappears and then reappears uh, about like, about like half a second later i want to say and then um you guys see we leave behind like an after image and stuff so yeah hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and stuff if you enjoyed definitely leave like and subscribe if you're new um if you guys want more tutorials more tutorials like this then just let me know leave some suggestions and stuff and yeah thank you guys for all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel I really do appreciate it and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you for watching